As the Canucks continue their disastrous start of the season, we take a look at nine alarming stats that reveal all that's going wrong in Vancouver so far this season and what they need to fix going forward in order to get back to their winning ways. We're going to be breaking down all that in this episode of Canucks Digest, but first make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you don't miss any all updates around the Canucks as we head into a critical game against the San Jose Sharks of all teams. And with that, let's hop into the first update, which is these nine stats are alarming so recently they came out on canucks army and they released a list of nine alarming stats that really tell the story of the vancouver canucks so far this season the first of which we got a quick look of it early on sorry about that but kevin lankin has been lights out he's 4-0 and two overtime losses in his six starts and has stabilized the canucks neck mining in the absence of thatcher demko not bad for a guy that was wasn't even in the mix until the final weekend of training camp he has a 2.29 goals against average 92 percent save percentage 26 save shutout in Philly on October 19th. It's hard to imagine where we would be without his solid goaltending so far this season. And according to Evolving Hockey, Lankin has prevented 3.9 goals above average and 3.13 goals above expected. He has delivered 10 of the 11 points to the Canucks have amassed in the early going this season. So yes, Lankin has been one of these surprising ones where we didn't expect to see Lankin come in and just really steal the starting goalie spot. Going into this season, we thought for sure Archer Shelobs was going to be the starting goalie. And now Lankin has kind of stepped in and really stole that from him and he was prepared for a competition he was ready for one and he was up for the challenge he's risen to that challenge and so far he has been the better of the two goalies so far this season it's no slight against Artie he was hung out to dry last game yes there was a lot of on-man rushes but so far Lankinen has proven to be the more consistent goaltender the second stat of which that they got into this is one of the last good ones that we're going to get into before it gets ugly but Quinn Hughes is on another level two goals six of seats the points aren't the level they were the, uh, for the Canucks half a season ago but make no mistake he has taken his game up a notch from his Norris Trophy winning campaign. Across the board, the underlying numbers grow when Hughes is on the ice. Canucks have controlled 62.6% of all shot attempts at 5-on-5 five five and 63 of all scoring chances and high dangers. 65% of expected goals and have outscored opponents 10-4, to four, giving him an individual 71.4 goal share. So if those numbers continue at some point, it has to lead to more output for himself and his teammates. Hughes by himself is a cheat code for the Canucks almost every shift out. Now he just needs a few others to try and match his level performance. But the problem with that is no one but the captain is shooting the puck. Quinn Hughes is leading the Canucks with 20 shots on 26 shots on goal at five on five after Hughes, Besser, Garland, Sherwood are, are the next on the team with 17 shots apiece. So leading the league among sh leading shooters among forwards aren't even averaging two shots on net uh, per goal on five on five. There are five forwards in the league who already are in the 30s. Hughes is tied for 12th in the league at this stage. Those others are tied for 106. Then you get to JT Miller and Elias Pettersson with 10 shots each at five on five and Jake DeBrusque with just eight through nine games. There has to be more to give from the Canucks biggest scoring threats and Tockett himself was airing out this frustration saying we're not shooting when we're supposed to shoot and when we're shooting when we aren't we're so caught in between we're slowing down the power play and it's frustrating thing for us right now it's a mental aspect for us right now we're going to have to keep working with the mind play more than physical so this is something where the stars haven't really come out zero shots on goal for either Besser or DeBrusque in the last game one shot from Miller two from Pedersen so it's easy to pile on the goalie on this one but the top end was nowhere to be found in the last game when we got blown out against the New Jersey Devils in the Hughes Bowl. There really hasn't been much star power for this team. There had Jake DeBrusque hasn't really panned out so far. Guys haven't really been showing up. We've had to rely on frankly our bottom six forwards to really get get things done our third and fourth line has been a lot more effective than our top two lines have been unfortunately and Kiefer Sherwood that he's exempt from all of this he is in his own league he is probably one of the best Canucks we have right now along with Quinn Hughes so once we have Dakota Joshua back hopefully this gives the spark that they need because right now there is a lack of star power Jake DeBrusque was signed in the offseason to give uh, PD a proven goal scorer to play with that experiment just lasted two games before DeBrusque was shuffled elsewhere in the lineup. Nine games into the season, DeBrusque has yet to score and has just two five-on-five five points, both secondary assists. By the eye test or the numbers, it's been a highly disappointing start for the newcomer. 
Meanwhile, the offensive struggles of Elias Pettersson have been well documented. The first player in the NHL to 25 points a season ago, Pettersson finished October with one goal and three assists for only four points. He had single points in four separate games and was held off the score sheet in five others. It's hard to imagine what they can do if they can't get these guys going. So this is something where Vancouver has a lot that they have to fix right now. The stars aren't playing. The goalie has been consistent, but our backup has been struggling when he's left out to dry. The defense has also been a struggle, which we're going to get into in a second but as far as the forwards go there was a tweet i saw where off the face off that pd1 i think it was on the power play where he hesitated to shoot the puck old pd would have just rifled that thing right away and not thought about it and probably would have scored if he had done that maybe that would have been the case but it doesn't seem like we're seeing the old pd anymore yes we saw flashes of it in the last game and i was on here saying it seems like he's back well it seems like he's wavering a little bit right now i think Vancouver's just in a slump right now. We have some injuries. I know Dakota Joshua is really the only notable one and Thatcher Demko, but once we get those two guys back, hopefully that is the jolt that this team needs. And the bottom four has been dreadful. If you want to pause it and take a look there, you can read it for yourself and see just how horrible the bottom four has been, whether it's been Carson Soucy, Tyler Myers, Derek Forbert, Noah Juleson. Really, Eric Branstrom has been the only one, but he hasn't been a consistent member of of the team yet so if you see there you can see how the how the point percentages and just the advanced stats have not gone in the favor of the bottom four pairings and especially when you look at the stats of Carson Susie or Carson uh, Susie and Tyler Myers when compared to the other lines so there is a lot a lot of things here where the top pair has not come out Carson Susie versus Quinn Hughes the numbers are night and day and Tyler Myers has even come out and spoke about this after the last game saying we have to realize what we're doing within our system, what we aren't doing, and then it just comes down to work. We've got to get back to work. We're not working hard right now. And if you were watching the game the other night, that would almost seem to be the case where Tyler Myers had a loose puck that in the offensive zone that he didn't jump on. It was taken back the other way for the first goal of the game. So things like that Vancouver needs to erase. Things are not going to be going good for them. And one thing that isn't going good along with the bottom four pairing with the playmakers is the power play. Yes, the conversion rate is 17.2, but it's been a massive issue so far this season. They went 0 for 10 in the three-game homestand that wrapped up on Wednesday night. More than that, surrendered a shorthanded goal to New Jersey's Dawson Mercer, so it was a net negative over the past three games. On the season, the power play has scored five times while allowing a pair of shorthanded goals. Power play scored twice in the first period of season opener in Calgary and has not scored at Rogers Arena since. On the season, the Canucks are 2 for 19, which is only 10.5 on the power play at home ice. Maybe it's a good thing we're heading out on the road again, and I definitely agree with this. We seem to be a better road team this year than anything. It seems like we have to just go out on the road all the time and just go on these road trips because looking at our home our home games, we have not been playing well at all. The power play has been a big part as to why the paying customers haven't really gotten their money's worth. We saw that they were getting very antsy in the last game. Last year, Canucks won 27 of their 41 games and were a dominant home ice team in the regular season. Maybe the best, if you're asking me, I would definitely say so. This season, they have managed one victory in the five games they played so far at Ross Arena. Yes, we've gotten points, but we haven't had a dominant game where Canucks opponents are going to have a hard time coming through Vancouver. We have not had that. And one of the big reasons why we haven't had that is because we go to beyond regulation for a lot of our games. Four times the Canucks have gone to overtime. Only once have they managed to snag the bonus point up for grabs. JT Miller scored a brilliant goal in Florida to get that win against the Florida Panthers. We got our first win of the season that way. Otherwise, lost in overtime to Calgary and Carolina, Philly in the shootout. A team with the reigning Norris Trophy winner, a pair of 100-point producers, and a 40-goal guy to choose from should be far better than it is when games go beyond regulation time. All points matter, and the Canucks have flushed three additional points available to them with subpar performances in games that require extra time. With this top end personnel, the Canucks should be so much better than they are in those situations. And I can't I can't disagree with this. This is something where Vancouver needs to figure out what they have to do in extra time. They need to figure out how to fix these problems because every time it seems to go right over out of overtime or into a shootout or just out of regulation, I'm already saying, all right, Canucks have lost this game. Because just when you look at the tape, how they play in extra reg- extra periods, they just don't have enough gas in the tank. The playmakers aren't making the plays. And with just less people on the ice, it's just leading to more opportunities for opponents. That's obviously not good. When those extra points are up, like the article said, you want to snag them. Every point is crucial in this game, even when it is 82 games. Yes, it's a lot of games, but that's so many points that are up for grabs if you're consistently pushing it to extra periods. 
And the last thing that we're going to touch on too is Elias Pettersson. The numbers don't lie. Pettersson doesn't look anything like the same player that roared out of the gates last season. According to the NHL Edge data, both his skating and shot velocity are down considerably from a year ago. Last season, Pettersson clocked a season-high skating speed of 22.4 miles per hour and registered 111 bursts over 20 miles per hour, including 3 over 22. His hardest shot was 97.67, with 15 of them topping 90, the 90 miles per hour mark. Compare that to the first nine games of this season when Pettersson's top skating speed was only measured at 21.7 and his hardest shot at 82.9. The only shot over 80 so far this season. So that is also a big thing where when we watch the games, we don't necessarily see these advanced stats. We don't see what these what these really mean when they until we see them on paper when we're watching the game we're just saying all right he's not moving his feet he's not getting the puck shot he's hesitating he's doing all these things but when we see them like this we see how it translates to paper and what it really looks like on paper versus on the ice and right now it's looking really bad i know we said before in this channel how when pd scored he seemed to be back but it seemed like that was just a little bit of a flash to try and find the old PD because I haven't seen the old PD in a while now. I know someone pointed out in the last game that there was a chance that he had to shoot it off of a faceoff and he didn't take it. The old PD probably would have just shot it without thinking and probably would have scored on that. Whereas PD, he took a bit of hesitation, moved it around a little bit and then shot it. That's not what we want to see out of him. Talked it, talked about that exact thing last season where he's got to move his feet and he's just got to get the puck shot on net. He can't be waiting. He can't be hesitating. He can't be in his own head. Sometimes you can't think. You just have to shoot, get pucks on net. Eventually, one of them is going to go through or you're just going to get a lucky bounce off of a player, a skate, a stick, or the goalie's best friend, or this time, in most cases, the enemy, which is the goalpost. So what do you guys think about all these stats? I know there was only two good ones. There was a lot of bad ones. There's a lot that the Vancouver Canucks need to fix heading into the next few games. Who would have thought that we'd be sitting here saying that this game against the San Jose Sharks is a must win? I wouldn't have thought that. I know you guys probably wouldn't have thought that, but hopefully we can go out and get a victory on Saturday night to start off these next batch of road games. Hopefully we can just win these guys, win these games and head back home to finally get some home wins that are just convincing and to make teams fear coming into Vancouver. But what do you guys think down below? Let us know in the comments. That is going to take us into our final topic of the day, which is comment of the day. And we see here from Lindsey Grief saying, great job, guys. Thank you. We appreciate all the love for you guys. I know sometimes we might just talk really fast to get through videos. I know with this video, it was a really fast one just because there was so much to cover. It was a bit longer than usual. But sometimes, you know, there's a lot that you have to cover and just have to get through it in a certain time span. So we appreciate all the love that you guys give. We love that you guys are appreciating the content that we work so hard to get out to you guys. We all just do it in the love of the Vancouver Canucks and to show them why we love this team. So thank you guys for the support. Thank you you guys for liking comment subscribing hitting that bell icon so you don't miss all the videos when they drop but that's going to do it for this episode of connects digest i've been your host griffin take care